All right, everyone. Hi, I'm Carly. This is ZooDU Virtual Safari. It's Endangered Species Week, and we are highlighting a fan favorite today, the African Wild Dog Pack. So Keeper Kelsey is going to be answering your questions, and we want to hop right to it because those dogs are ready to come out into the yard, and we are going to show you them joining out, coming on out here, and enjoying some enrichment. So hello, everyone. Those early birds are getting a special treat. So they are going to be coming out the door, kind of in the middle of your screen. And you can see we have a keeper up there on the roof, and here they come. Who's first, Kelsey? So this is Jesse. He is the alpha male of the pack. He's the dad of the group. So we have six dogs. They're going to kind of start coming out one by one in groups. Um, but he's the dad of the group. Um, the oldest male, he's nine years old. So. Hello to Josh and Xander and Nancy. Hi there, all right here. So that's Jesse again coming out. <laughs> Uh, we had them oh. inside, we just gave them part of their their daily diet. The rest of their daily diet is out in this yard scattered around, so you get to see them eating some of that. Um, but they were inside separated for training, so they like to greet each other when they first get back together. Who was that second so one that just came? The second one that came out was David Livingston. <laughs> and then the last two that just ran out were the two females. Tilly was the last one. She's the alpha male, the mom of the group. And then Cholula, the only uh, daughter. So. This pack consists of six dogs. We have Jesse and Tilly, they're the parents, and then they're four two and a half year old offspring uh, that were born in November of 2017. So they live in a family group. This is natural for them. Um, and they like to live in big groups. They're very social animals. Um, so when you're watching them do scatter feeds like this, you can see a lot of different social behaviors come into play. Um, so it's really important that we do that for them. Um, who was the one that just got all three of them? <laughs> <laughs> that was David Livingston again, yes. So he is the most dominant of the three young boys. <laughs> he really just came up there and said, all mine. And Nigel is right straight back there. A couple questions right off the bat about how Nigel's doing. Yeah. He looks like he's doing great. He is doing awesome. Uh, someone actually took a picture last week of him running across the yard and you wouldn't even have noticed that he was missing a leg. So he's doing really great. We're working hard on his training and his physical therapy and scatter feeds like this out in the yard is really important for him to build strength as well. So if you're just joining us, you're looking at our family pack of African wild dogs. We have mom Tilly, dad Jesse, and the four pups, uh, Nigel, Cholula, David Livingston, and Theodore Roosevelt. So how old are mom and dad? We know that the uh, the pups are about two and a half. Yes, yeah, so Jesse is nine years old and Tilly will be eight in September. And talk about the conservation status of, this, of these dogs. I mean, we are talking about them during Endangered Species Week. So what can people do to educate themselves about this species and uh, what they face in the wild? Yes, that is a great question. African painted dogs are endangered. There's less than 6,000 of them in the wild. So it's really cool that we can have them here at Denver Zoo um, and we can showcase them during Endangered Species Week because of their endangered status. Unfortunately, they face a, a variety of threats out in Africa, um, hunting and retaliatory killings from farmers as they often um, will be blamed for livestock that are predated on. Um, they also are susceptible to disease since they live in these large packs and they're very close with each other, always in contact with the members of their pack. Disease can spread quickly uh, through a pack of painted dogs. Um, and then also habitat loss. They are a roaming species. They spend a ton of time moving. They might travel up to 30 miles in a day to to prey on food and roam around. Um, they're not always sleeping in the same spot every night. So it's important for them to have space. Um, so when they're when that habitat is getting smaller and then predators like lions and hyenas are also competing for that space, um, it leads to that competition. And that is a couple of the reasons they are endangered. Very good. So we have some questions coming in. Dominic was wondering what was on the windows that Livingston got there. Great question. So that is, Part of their daily diet, five days a week, they're gonna get a ground beef diet. It's human grade, the same type of beef you would buy at the grocery store if you were making burgers or chili. We do add some supplement to it to get some supplements because naturally they would be eating muscle meat and they would be eating tendons and also fur and skin and getting a lot of those organs that we don't eat. Um, so that was scattered around on in the yard and then we also fed them some of that inside as well. Um, Donna's wondering what their average lifespan is. Yes, these guys are one of the shorter lived species in Predator Ridge. Their average lifespan is seven to 10 years. 
seven to ten years and then Nate says why are they painted well you can see there Nate they just kind of look like someone painted some nice black white you know sandy colored spots on them they're very yes. beautiful and that is how we tell them apart so everyone's coat is different and specifically we generally look at the white parts of their coat when we're identifying the individuals in the pack or if you were ident identifying individuals in the wild and that white is also how you can tell them from hyenas a lot of people see african painted dogs and they see those big ears and they assume that they are baby hyenas or related to hyenas uh, but they're actually very different and the easiest way to tell them apart is by that white um, specifically on the tip of their tail they always have that white fur as well so let's quickly talk about Nigel. A lot of our regular zoo visitors and guests, they know about Nigel's story, but we've created a whole new audience here on Virtual Safari. So give everyone a refresher on what happened to Nigel. Yes, so Nigel um, was the runt in the litter, but he was also born with some birth defects. He essentially did not have a hip socket. So he had a severe form of hip dysplasia. And very early on, we noticed that he was walking differently than the other pups. He wasn't using that back leg. So we got a team together of veterinarians, zookeepers, physical therapists, um, and assessed him. And we decided that the best decision at four months old was to amputate that leg. Um, he wasn't using it. It seemed to be causing pain. We didn't want it to cause secondary issues. Um, so we amputated it. You'll see he just has um, a partial leg there. Uh, he uses that for balance and for protection. Um, and then we started a very intensive physical therapy program with him. We, we can't share the space with the same space with these dogs, so we do all of that through training, um, using that ground meat diet that we use today as well to train him to build strength in his core, strengthen his back leg, um, and it's been really awesome to see his progression over the years and to see him moving almost normally. So I hope that answers your question, Christina, about what types of physical therapy we're able to do without that contact. So I assume it's yes. probably a lot of target training. Yes, target training or A to B. So asking him to move um, from one place to another, asking him to jump on benches, go upstairs. The snow was also a great form of physical therapy because he didn't want to get his stomach wet or his partial leg wet. So he would hold that up and keep it out of the snow, which was building strength and balance as well. Very cool. Nick, uh, Nate is asking who are their closest relatives? Yeah, great question. So these guys are true canids. They are African painted dogs, uh, but they're very distantly related to other forms of canids like wolves um, and domestic dogs. So very different, very wild, um, very social, grouped socially. They have a strict hierarchy, very intelligent. Um, so they are a true canid, just very distant from what we're familiar with. And, you know, some people are asking, you know, is he safe in the pack? Is he picked on? And we heard this from Molly when we highlighted hyenas a couple weeks ago that the pack really takes care of Nigel, don't they? Yes, he's, he's pretty spoiled actually. Um, he knows his place in the pack and so he's submissive when it's appropriate. Um, but dogs are very altruistic. They will take care of each other. They'll take care of old animals, ill animals, sick animals, injured animals. So just like that, they take care of Nigel. Um, so he sometimes he can fight the biggest bone off of his brothers, even though they're more dominant than him um, because they want to take care of him. So he's definitely spoiled and very lucky to be an African painted dog. So they have that kind of human grade ground beef in their diet. What else is in their diet? So we also feed them bones and carcass. So every Tuesday is generally carcass day. So we would feed them something like rabbit or guinea pig or quail as some of their favorites. And then on Fridays we do a bone day. So this is essentially a fast day, which would mimic how they would fast and not eat every single day in the wild. They might catch a huge prey item, gorge themselves, and then kind of sleep it off for a couple days and fast. Uh, so that will, that's what we do with Friday bone day. Those bones don't have a lot of meat on them but they are great for their teeth, great for digestion, and then another good opportunity for social feeding as well. How would you describe the social dynamics of our pack? Uh, great question. So these guys have a pretty strict hierarchy. We've got the females will have a hierarchy. So Tilly, uh, for the most part, is dominant to her daughter Cholula. Cholula's getting to that age where she's definitely starting to challenge Tilly. Um, and then the boys will have their hierarchy as well. So David Livingston, the one that got all the meat right up front, he's definitely the most dominant of his brothers. And then Theodore Roosevelt and Nigel, and then Jesse is uh, the dad of the group. So the, the pups are getting to an age where they're starting to challenge their parents, see what they can get away with. Um, the parents 
are probably getting a little tired of it, letting things go more than they should. Um, so it's definitely interesting to watch uh, their behavior and their social dynamics for sure. Christina's wondering um, what they prey on in the wild. Yeah, great question. These guys, um, they'll hunt impala, wildebeest, warthogs. Um, most, most often they're gonna be hunting smaller antelope uh, impala is probably most common. The largest thing they might get is a wildebeest. Packs can get anywhere from two animals to 20 animals. So if you've got 20 dogs together, they can definitely take down some larger prey items for sure. Oh, Rory has a good question about their names. He's picked up on the kind of Theodore Roosevelt, David Livingston. Yes. What was the um, kind of pattern behind naming our boy pups? Yes, the boys are all named um, after adventures and explorers, explorers. Uh, so we've got Theodore Roosevelt, David Livingston, and then Nigel Thornberry. So kind of a wide range of explorers, adventurers, outdoor people, um, people that have done a lot for wildlife. So that was the theme kind of with the three boys. You need to be a millennial kid in like the 90s to know Nigel Thornberry, <laughs> but he was a great explorer. And, he lo when, and we love them. So um, Jeanette's wondering, do they bark like dogs, howl like wolves? What are their vocalizations? Yeah, great question. What we hear the most is some food begging. So it's a really high pitched, continuous noise. It's pretty loud. Um, they do it a lot when they're excited. Um, when they greet, they also do another vocalization. Sounds a little bit different, but a lot of them are pretty high pitched, uh, kind of just in different patterns and then uh, Jesse, the male, he'll also sing, um, which I don't know who decided to call it singing because it's not <laughs> very pleasant, but they have tons of different vocalizations. A lot are more high pitched, but they will get those like lower um, defensive noises as well, especially if they're trying to threaten the lions um, or protect food. Yeah, we have one of those kind of things outside of the habitat where you can press a button and hear what they sound like. Yes. And, you know, comment if you want to hear my impression of it because it's pretty good. Uh, Thatcher wants to know if they can swim. They have a little shallow pool here, but are they big swimmers? Uh, not big swimmers, but they love to wade in the pool um, to cool off. Jesse especially, he actually is wet from, from laying in the pool earlier. So they love to just lay in there and cool off. Jesse probably the, loves it the most. Oh, Rory says, where is Mary Leather, Meriwether Lewis? Well, sorry, we just, we didn't have enough pups to name <laughs> all the explorers after them. And then Cholula just got a hot sauce name. <laughs> yes. That's her, what we wanted to do. <laughs> her uncle, um, his name was Taco. So we kind of did her name in relation to that. <laughs> Jackie says, do your impression. It's, it's kind of like a... <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, Cara. Right, don't blame Kelsey for that. It's just kind of, it's like a high-pitched, like, Garble? I don't know. It's very cool to hear. When the zoo opens, you'll have to visit and you can hear it <laughs> yes. in its true form. Yes, yeah, so mine was not very accurate. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, so I know we could have named one Steve Irwin as well, Dominic. I'm sorry. So what is your favorite part about working with them? Are they easy to work with or is it hard when there's such a big group dynamic? Yeah, these guys have actually probably been one of the most challenging animals um, I have worked with. I came into working in Predator Ridge not knowing a lot about this species. Um, and since they're social and they have such a specific hierarchy, there are a lot of things that we do to manage them uh, to make that pack and that social dynamic successful. So it definitely took a long time, a lot of learning, a lot of observing the other keepers who have worked in here for a long time about how we separate them when we feed them for training or how we set up enrichment or different areas in the building when we're rotating them to make them the most successful. Um, hi, Ashley. The hyenas are in the main yard of Benson Predator Ridge. Is anyone in maternity? Yes, we do have uh, the family pride of lions. The family pride of lions are in our kind of smaller maternity yard today. And then, of course, Kamara is still behind the scenes with her Yes, Kamara is still behind the scenes and inside with her cubs. She's been having a great time with them. Eli wants to know how many pups um, a painted dog can have at once. Yeah, they can have up to 19 pups. They can have a lot of pups. Um, mm -hmm but a lot of times they're having a lot of pups, but not all of them will survive to um, sub-adulthood. So we have four in this pack. Um, I think 19 would be a little crazy. So I think Oof. Tilly is lucky and we're lucky too that she didn't have as many as they can. Yes, Annie's 19. She's a former team volunteer. Hi, Annie. She's wondering how they're adjusting to the lack of guests. 
I don't feel like the dogs notice much. <laughs> um, definitely some of the animals notice whether they like it or don't like it, but I feel like the dogs are pretty focused on each other, um, pretty focused on food, and I don't think they seem to mind miss the guests, and I'm sure they'll be happy when the guests are back too and not notice much. Uh, Lucinda's wondering if we have any babies in the future. We do not have any babies in the future or plan to plans to breed these African painted dogs. Tilly is um, older in age and we've still got um, some social dynamics we're working through with the current pack. Uh, so we're currently not planning for that. And they look pretty tired out. They, you know, they came, they ran around, got their food and forage, and now they're just zonked out. Is that pretty typical for a painted dog? Pretty typical. <laughs> yep. They're gonna work hard, run around, get pretty, pretty good exercise searching for that food. And then they're gonna I'll take a snooze in the sun or, or in the shade. Yes. Jesse likes the shade more than the sun, but everyone else seems to be choosing a sunny spot today. Nigel cannot seem to pick where he wants to relax today. I've seen the pool, I've seen the tub, I, we've seen right here in the shade, and now he's plopped down in the grass. So Yes, he definitely really likes that tub. I think sometimes it gets get pretty warm with the sun reflecting off of it, so he wants to get in there and then maybe he gets a little warm. Uh, hi, Dominic. We do carcass feedings with the dogs. That's usually Tuesday. And then, Jessica, we kind of explained up earlier in the comments about what happened with Nigel, but essentially he had a severe hip injury or just kind of birth defect where he didn't really have a hip socket, and we just thought it was best for his quality of life to amputate that hind leg. Um, let's see. Luke is wondering if they like the snow. We mentioned snow can be good physical therapy for Nigel, so sometimes they're out in it, aren't they? Yeah, they don't definitely don't seem to mind the snow. When it snows, we do get out into the habitats and shovel paths for the animals so they don't have to walk through the snow if they don't want to. Um, the dogs definitely ignore the paths and do their own thing. Uh, so they definitely don't mind it. Um, it's different for them. A lot of times in Colorado, we'll have snow on the ground, but it'll be really sunny out. Um, so it's not too cold for them either, but we do have heated rocks in the exhibit as well as some radiant heaters as well. So if it does get a little bit cold, we can give them the choice to either come inside or enjoy outside space, but with more of a controlled temperature. Who's this right up here with us? This is Cholula. This is Cholula, our one female of the two and a half year olds. Lorelai seven, she wants to know, is there fur that color to help them camouflage? Yeah, they camouflage pretty well. Um, surprisingly, a lot of different coat patterns of animals that don't seem like they would camouflage do blend in um, with shadows of um, different branches or trees in a lightly wooded area, as well as the tall grass. That's a lot of times that kind of that brownish color. Animals will blend in pretty well. Josh is wondering how bad they shed. <laughs> These guys don't shed too much. I feel like the lions just shed so much from their manes that no one else I even really noticed their hair anywhere. <laughs> How do they kind of bathe themselves? Just sort of like a domestic dog would, just by kind of licking? Yes, they groom themselves. Um, they'll groom each other a little bit and then also kind of laying in the pool as well. But they're definitely probably not nearly as clean as a domestic dog. They're pretty pretty greasy too, so. Yeah, I've, I've smelled a couple of these guys. It's not pleasant. They don't mind. Here's a little puppy pile over there. Who's who's snuggling over there? That's Theodore Roosevelt and David Livingston. Aw, little brother pile. Mm -hmm. And then behind them are Tilly and Jesse. The parents, they are often seen sleeping together. And then Nigel chose this shady spot over here while Cholula's kind of still. Fifth time's the charm, Nigel. Sniffing out for whatever's <laughs> left over. Uh, Sheila says she'll be coming from Cheyenne when we reopen. We cannot wait for that. Uh, Jean says, where are they native from? These guys are found um, in Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Tanzania, Mozambique, different countries. In Africa. And Nate asks, what do they like for enrichment? Uh, definitely food. Um, whether it's carcass or bones or scatter feeds like this, this is probably their favorite anything uh, food related, uh, but they also like things that they can lay in. So whether it's paper or cardboard boxes or shavings, uh, they like to kind of create beds and then they'll split off and sleep in different groups like they're doing now. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> finally <laughs> Nigel joined the rest of his siblings. And Nigel couldn't resist being a part of this little uh, slumber pack party over here. I think that's just adorable. So they don't seem to really be into the enrichment items the way the hyenas were or the lions are with like gourds and toys more like yeah they'll play with stuff stuff that they can pick up a lot of the bigger toys that the lions and the hyenas like to pick up and play with um are kind of big for these guys that they just maybe push them around on the ground um 
But we do have some small balls and a metal bowl in the pool, things like that we try and do that are different. They like sticks. Um, we'll give them bedding from other animals so it's nice and stinky and often they'll go to the bathroom on it. Uh, so we try and keep things different. We do use a lot of the same toys for the hyenas and the lions and the dogs, uh, but they definitely have different preferences. Can they drag around these sticks themselves to kind of build things? They won't really do it to, to build anything, but they'll definitely like play with sticks and, <laughs> and run around with some of these smaller ones. A lot of them are in piles because of the the keepers oh, okay so um, the keepers arrange them that. that way whether it's to protect mm -hmm. the trees uh to help with irrigation um in the yard or just for fun building stuff uh rory says are they day or night are they nocturnal or diurnal they are more diurnal so a lot of um animals actually are nocturnal i feel like here at the zoo and that i work with but these are, are going to be awake most of the day and hunting during the day um but also lots of naps because they yes. wear themselves out um, with with hunting and running around for scatter feeds um, so lots of naps throughout the days they're just snoozy right now but they're not nocturnal uh, autumn's wondering are they pretty strong and do they have that same kind of destructive tendencies that the hyena does definitely not as strong as the hyenas but still extremely strong and powerful um, i mean packs of dogs are bringing down prey items as large as wildebeest. So you can picture how big those are compared to a dog. Um, and they still have to be strong and rely on their jaw to bring those animals down. They don't have claws like lions can grab on with. Um, so they're mostly gonna be running animals to exhaustion. They're super strong runners, um, but then they still have to have that strength as well. Just not quite as strong as destructive as the hyenas are for sure. What do you think their best sense is? They have pretty big ears. They seem to be able to sniff out their food pretty quickly. Yeah, I think um, it's pretty obvious they're really good listeners. Mm -hmm. They've got really big ears, big satellite ears um, to listen to, but also great, great um, scent and eyesight as well. I think a painted dog would make a really great Halloween costume. You could have really that big would. ears and have really pretty spots and like a white tipped tail. Yep. That's Parents, you're idea. welcome. Just me thinking of your kid's Halloween costume. Um, Jessica's wondering if they would hunt a lion. No, they definitely wouldn't. These guys are um, not very fond of lions. They definitely keep their distance from lions. Um, both here and in uh, out in Africa, we see the most reactions in this rotational exhibit from the lions and the dogs when they are across the hall to. Um, from each other or if they're across the exhibit together. Um, so lions are a lot bigger than these guys. Definitely couldn't take them down. Um, a lot of times lions will actually st steal a, a hunted item that these guys successfully caught and are eating on. So um, lions are not their friends. Definitely they pretty much avoid them. Yes a lot of times you can see where you know like that green and brown demarcation is all the dogs will be right over there looking over into the main yard when there's a lion yes over there yes and when they come inside it can get pretty loud <laughs> when they're threatening the lions and the lions are threatening them back um delana's wondering are they a female dominated society like hyenas yeah great question um the females and the males for the most part most part kind of have their own hierarchy within the pack um but definitely that alpha female is going to be the leader of the pack um, so somewhat female dominant, I guess, um, but most, for the most part, it's kind of split up and you've got two different situations going on. Hi, Anna. We're just focusing on the wild dogs today because it's endangered species week and we wanted to give these guys their own highlight because they're an endangered species and we wanted to feature them. So we'll be back with another animal tomorrow. Um, oh, questions about what their fur feels like. Yeah. Um, kind of coarse um and pretty greasy i mean not not, not a soft. stuffed animal yeah not soft like like your pet dogs um they don't clean up as much and get baths like dogs do <laughs> just if they want to go for a swim so i know i think a lot of our animals have the impression that they look a lot softer than they would yes <laughs> than they actually are um rory's wondering how fast the pups grow yeah great question these these guys were full grown by two years old. I mean, at one year old, they were pretty pretty close um, to the same size as their parents, but it was, you could still tell they were a little bit smaller, but they are full grown now. Um, and other than 
their behavior and us knowing them, uh, you wouldn't be able to necessarily tell that they were a lot younger, but just by their size. I started here when they were about eight months old and they already had that coloring, but they're born with a lot kind of different color markings. They seem a lot darker. Yeah. I was, just, I was looking at a video of them yeah. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, definitely as they get older, different markings can change and so you have to pay attention. Um, and things that you used to tell them apart with might not be there anymore. How do sure. you tell them apart personally? Uh, different things. A lot of times I'm looking at their ears and then that white part of their coat for sure. Um, so uh, Jesse and Tilly, I feel like just looking at their face, they just look a little bit older. Um, nothing super specific about them that I pick up on. Uh, but for the pups, Cholula, she's got a really dark face and then kind of a white little colored mustache that's she's the one coming up right now um, and then I'll look at the ears for David Livingston and Theodore Roosevelt Teddy's got a, a notch out of his left ear um, that's pretty easy to use to identify him oh look she was sort of half basking half getting in the shade they just can't decide today these little pups oh, oh that's a nice pillow <laughs> now she says no no you're my pillow Nigel yes. Um, is the pond slash puddle drinking hole, or is it a drinking hole, or is it more of like a relaxing cool off? Whatever they want. They have other drinkers in the yard that they can drink from, uh, but often they're doing it out of the out of the pool, and so we make sure we're cleaning that frequently. And then Jesse uses a, a lot to kind of wade and cool off, and maybe to clean off, but I don't feel like he gets very clean. <laughs> Nate's wondering how long they'll stay with mom in the wild. Uh, it depends, yeah. Related males and related females will often stick together, um, but there are times where males and females will disperse off and uh, start their own pack or join other packs. Um, so it's really pretty variable depending on how large the pack is, how successful they are at hunting, um, other variables like predators in the area. Uh, so there's kind of a lot that goes into that. <laughs> brother and sister. Well, we'll take a few more questions, everyone. You guys have been asking some great ones today. What do you think we can do from our homes uh, to help protect this species? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think today we really want to highlight that everything you do has an impact on wildlife, especially when you're spending time outdoors. So we don't li live in the same area as African painted dogs, but there are tons of animals that are endangered and super important. Uh, to nature that we do live around. So whether we're out walking or on a trail, um, there's simple things that we can do to keep those endangered species safe. Um, whether we're staying a safe distance from wildlife, cleaning up after ourselves, staying on designated trails, just remembering that we're a visitor in this outdoor space and this is their home. Yeah. Well, let's take one more little check-in, a little inventory of our pups here. This is Nigel and Tallulah? Yes. There's nine. I feel like these are the groups we often see them sleeping in. <laughs> Tilly and Jesse are often together. Uh, David Livingston and Theodore Roosevelt are usually together. And then Nigel and Cholula either off on their own or kind of with their brothers. Yeah. So mom and dad are up there. Who's behind the tree? Jesse and then Tilly's in the shade. Jesse's kind of behind that tree and then Tilly's enjoying some shade and all of her kids are right over here and they're having such a great time and we've had such a great time with you all today we appreciate you joining us asking great questions nate has one more he wants to know if they're good climbers uh not great climbers i mean they have rocks and stuff that they'll bounce around um and jump off of in their yard but they're not climbing trees like the lions might be yeah it's a little more like parkour they're just kind of like jumping yeah. parkour is a great <laughs> a great way to describe it um, when can people see them kind of at their most active when they come to the zoo? Um, it depends. I feel like it might depend on how we are feeding them that day. I feel like the first uh, moment they get out in the yard, they're exploring, they're checking out new enrichment. Maybe we put some snacks out there for them. They're going to be pretty active. Um, and then they're going to probably go back and rest. And then sometimes in the middle of the day, we'll pop up on the roof and toss them treats. Uh, or bring them inside for a training session and set up new enrichment. So it's pretty variable for them. I think a lot of it depends on our plans for the day, um, but they definitely can play really hard and then rest really hard. <laughs> uh, Lala's wondering if we feed them live food. We do not. Um, all the food that we spoke about in terms of carcass day is all um, feeder products that we get in frozen and then we thaw. Um, 
Randy is just joining us. She's wonder, or yep, she's wondering why this species is considered endangered. Um, are they hunted for their coats? What's going on that's causing their population to decrease? Yes, there's definitely some hunting going on. Um, not really for their coats, but more so uh, retaliatory killing from uh, farmers. A lot of times, dogs and lions and hyenas are blamed for livestock that may be killed um, when they aren't being watched. Um, so a lot of times, these predators are being blamed for that and then local people are retaliating on them which is really sad and unfortunate because that's often not the case it's not often the dogs that are doing that um, but there's also habitat loss um, and disease as well that affects their populations and there's only about 6,000 or less than 6,000 of them in the wild which is crazy to think a lot of times on a busy day at the zoo in the summer we get more than 6,000 guests so that really puts it in perspective Thank you so much, Kelsey. Karen says, great talk, learned a lot. That's exactly what we want people to walk away with. Some new facts about maybe their favorite animal or new facts about an animal they didn't even know we had here at the zoo. So we appreciate you all tuning in, donating. You all have been so generous. We have another um, live tomorrow to wrap up Endanger Endangered Species Week. So we appreciate all your awesome questions. Make sure you're back here tomorrow at one for another virtual safari. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Bye, everyone.